All right, so like usual, I print out a, uh, a different version of your quiz and I use the questions from it to kind of give you guys uh, an outlook as to what you're gonna see, okay? Um, I noticed that there's about four questions, okay? So there's about four questions that are gonna look like this. So, and I'm not gonna do four of them, but you guys should have the notes and we'll talk about it right now. Uh, but it's gonna say, what is the name? of a polynomial with four terms okay so what do we call a polynomial with four terms okay does anybody know what we call that if it has four terms yeah, well, it's a polynomial. That's the general case, but let's be more specific. Is it a mo is it a monomial if it has four terms? Quartic. Yeah, it's called quartic, right? Um, so, um, so it would be a polynomial, or um, you could call it quartic polynomial. Okay, so quartic. Now, if they say three terms, you would call it a trinomial. If they say two terms, you'd call it a binomial. If they say one term, you would call it monomial, right? So, um, so yeah, you could call it a quartic polynomial. If it's five terms, quintic polynomial. Three terms, trinomial. Two terms, binomial. One term, monomial, okay? So, that's all in your notes. Um, that was from section, if I'm correct, 412, I think. Yeah, so proper names of terms, right? And, and uh, what Patrick said, many terms polynomial is correct. You could also just call it a, a polynomial as well. Okay, four terms. More than three, we just call it polynomial, right? Uh, so that would also be correct just to call it a polynomial. But that's, that's what I was talking about with that first example, okay? So, again, there's going to be four questions like that. So, you're guaranteed to see that, um, so let me just call it a polynomial just to make it more general, okay? Just the polynomial is fine. Um, but I guarantee you there's going to be a question that says, what do you call it if it's one term, two terms, three terms, and four terms, Okay? So make sure you know all those four because those questions will pop up. All right, we're just doing one, but we don't have to do all of them. Um, then they're going to say, what are the roots to this function? All right, and they're going to give us an equation here. So f of x is equal to... Let's say 2x, x minus 3 squared, x plus 2. Now, we just did this yesterday, right? This has to do, notice they have powers on the top, so this has to do with multiplicity, okay? Um, but still, if it's factored out and they want you to find the solutions, the roots, the zeros, what you have to do is you're going to get your original problem and you're going to set it equal to zero. Can someone tell me what you do from there? What do I do once I do that? What's my next step? Or what property am I supposed to use? I heard somebody say something. I don't know. <clears throat> Anybody, anybody want to give it a shot? Either what do I have to do or what property should I use? All right. All right. What about the 2x? 2. I can do that one too, right? Even if it's just a number, you can just set the number equals 0. Then you'll be like, that doesn't make sense. But everything that's multiplying. So 2x, I'm going to set it equal to 0. So yeah, so we're good. x minus 3 equal to 0. x plus 2 
equal to zero, right? Everything that gets multiplied gets set equal to zero. That's called the zero product property. Okay, bless you. So, uh, yeah, called the zero product pro property. So notice, if I try to solve 2x equal to zero, what's x equal to here? For 2x equal to zero, if I divide by two, I get x equals zero, right? If I add three here, I get x equal to three, and we'll talk about that in a bit. And if I subtract two here, I get x equal to negative two. What do I do with this power of two right there? Because we solved for that, right? X minus three squared, we solved for X minus three, I got an answer of three, but what does the power tell me to write? We'll say it again. I think I heard you say it. Anybody remember, what does the power make me write after the answer? Of, well, yeah, to the power, so a multiplicity of two, right? So my answer, let me just write it under, is going to look like this x equals negative 2 i'm just writing them in order okay from uh, smallest to largest negative 2 0 and 3 multiplicity of 2 and that's my answer if there was a uh, let's say over here there was a 4 on the x plus 2 then I would write the answer negative 2 multiplicity of 4, right? So if there's a power, you're going to have to write multiplicity of the power, right? So multiplicity of 2, multiplicity of 4, multiplicity of 7, okay, whatever the power has, happens to be. Now I'm telling you guys, these questions are actually supposed to be really tough because they're supposed to put them all together and you're supposed to factor them, but remember what I told you. We don't do that until trig, really, when we start giving them those really tough questions. In Algebra 2, we say, you know what, let's factor it for them, and let's see if they can figure out multiplicity. So that's why I told you I don't think these are as hard as what they're supposed to be, because uh, what they're supposed to be is pretty tough. And, and it's not that doing the work is hard. This is not hard. The hard part is the factoring of something to the fifth power. Like, that's tough, right? I don't even like doing it. So if I don't like to do it, you know, it's got to be something that's not easy to do, right? Um, so, so we get rid of that hard part and just tell you guys, here, this is what it looks like. So, okay, you're going to have, let me see, one, two, trying to see how many of these show up like that. Um, I think you're going to have two of these types of problems, okay, with multiplicity, okay? So, all right, any questions so far on, on just a uh, number of terms or uh, solving for these things here? No? So let's, let's move on. Now, there's gonna, they're going to give you some pictures a couple of times, okay? So we're going to do some stuff that has pictures in it. Right now, it's going to be a bit annoying because since the program updated, I'm going to have to uh go to that so it takes me a little bit longer to get it to it oh, hold on let me all my uh all of my quick shortcuts are not there give me a second i'm just trying to find something i'm gonna have to fix all that stuff i don't know why i did that but it did So I'll figure it out later. Now, don't worry about your graph looking perfect just like mine. Make sure it crosses a certain number of times, the x-axis, okay? So here we go. Here's your question. How many zeros does this polynomial have? There's going to be some questions like that. They're just going to ask you, how many zeros 
does it have? How many solutions? Where do I look? The x-axis. How many times does this cross the x-axis? Four. Here's one, two, three, four. So my answer is four. There'll be a couple questions like that. I mean, super easy. Remember, this is easy if you know where to look, right? That's what I'm telling you guys. This quiz, I don't think it's a hard quiz if you know what to do, right? If you know, like, oh, when they talk zeros, I'm looking at my x-axis. Here's a graph so I can find them from here. Oh, this, they want to know if at this point it's uh, even multiplicity or odd. Does it bounce or does it go through, right? Like, if you, if you have good notes, I think you should be pretty good with this quiz because most of the stuff to do this doesn't take a lot of math. It just takes kind of some knowledge of how stuff works. That's all. So hopefully you guys will agree with me tomorrow um, uh, when you take it that it's not terrible. It's just you have to have some good notes here. All right. So there's going to be another one. Let me uh, do this in the right order so I don't have to try to find my undo. Okay, so remember how I told you yesterday that sometimes in your homework they give you some questions that look like they zoomed in too far, right? So there's going to be some questions like that that look like they've been zoomed in too far. I'm going four to the right, four to the left, two up and two down, okay? I'll label them one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, one, two, and negative one, negative two. What they're going to want us to do is they're going to, in this problem, uh, we're going to draw a picture and then they're going to say, okay, which one has even multiplicity? Which zero has even multiplicity? So here we go. Whoops. So the question is, what zero, maybe they might say what root has even multiplicity. And we'll do, we'll do a, an A and a B. What zero has odd multiplicity? Because I looked and there's a couple questions like that. They're saying, hey, does this zero have even or odd multiplicity? Or they might say uh, x equal to five is even multiplicity. And then when you look, it's bouncing. And you're like, oh, that's true. Or maybe it's going through and you're like, no, that's false, right? So they're gonna ask you questions in different ways, but they're all basically based on the same idea, right? If it's even, it bounces. If it's odd, it goes through. So. Which one of those zeros bounces off? Let me, let me zoom in. At negative two, it bounces, right? It hits the x-axis and bounces back. So that means it has an even multiplicity. So x equal negative two. I kind of missed the mark on two. It was supposed to be a two. I'm sorry about that. But right here at this point, right? So it's supposed to be at two. Notice how the line goes right through the x-axis. That means that it's an odd multiplicity. Okay. So odd multiplicity. So, I mean, again, is this hard to do if you know what you're doing? No, right? It's pretty straightforward. They're not trying to be tricky, right? Um, I know I put in a question, uh, I actually made this quiz, I put in a question that basically said, it'll say this, x equal to 2 has even multiplicity, true or false. x equals 2, so you look at your picture, has even multiplicity. Well, you look at it, it goes through. So that's odd. So you would put false. 
right? That's just a true or false question. You just got to look and see what, what they give you. So, okay. Um, next one. Uh, what is the maximum number of turns given f of x equal to 3x to the fifth minus 6x to the fourth plus 2x minus 1. In other words, how many times does this turn? Anybody know? Five. Well, 5 is the degree. So you got to subtract 1, right? Yeah, so 4. So it's, I'm going to put a little thing here. Remember, it's degree minus 1, right? So your answer would be 4. Okay? So if the degree was a 6, the answer of turns would be 5. Right? If your degree was a 10, then the number of turns would be 9. It's always one less. So there's, there's questions like that. I'm looking at them right now. A couple that are going to basically say, look, here's, a, here's a, a polynomial. How many times is it going to turn? Right? So you just subtract 1. There's going to be questions where all they're going to do is ask you, what is the degree of that function? So what was the degree of this function here? Five, right? The highest power is called your degree. So they'll ask you questions like that. Pretty easy questions, right? They'll say, what is the degree of this function? Then they'll write one out. And you just got to look for the highest power and state it. That's it. Okay? We did that in section 412. Remember in section 412, we talked about what do you call things of degree 1, degree 2, degree 3, 4, and 5, right? So linear uh, we had quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic, okay? So um, those questions weren't tough to do. I mean, we, I think we did examples right here. Example number one from your notes, right? Uh, name each polynomial by degree and number of turns. So we had to know whether it was quartic, quintic, etc. They may just ask you, what is the degree? Not by its proper name, but just numerically. So you might say three or four or seven. Okay, so um, you'll, you'll see some questions like that, okay, um, or they may ask you how many times it turns, right? So, all right, let me see. Before we get into end behavior, I just want to check something else out really quick. All right, so let's talk about end behavior. Now, for this one, you're going to need uh, those notes from section 413. Um, where is it at? Right here. Wait, was it for? Oh no, it was four twelve. It was four twelve. Near the end. Yeah, these notes right here, right? If the degree is even but positive, or even and negative, or if it's odd and positive, odd and negative, it does certain things. Okay, so um, you're gonna want to look at that when you're doing these next couple of problems. Now, I'm going to ask you guys to maybe look at your notes because I, I can't have both open at the same time. Um, so here's, a, here's an example of something like this. Describe the end behavior so in other words, what happens at the left and on the right side of so uh, here's negative 9x cubed plus 2x plus 1. So what does that do? So what you're supposed to do is focus on the degree and on the number in front of the degree. So what's my degree here? Say again. My degree is... What's my highest power? Three. So my degree is three. That's odd. Okay. What's my A term? In other words, the number in front of that degree. Negative nine. So I'm going to write A is negative. Right? So now I'm going to go back to my list and I'm going to look. What 
what does it do if it's an odd degree and a negative a? So I'm gonna go to my list. Let's see, odd degree, negative. So it rises left and it falls to the right. So all I'm gonna do is write that down, right? It rises to the left and it falls to the right. And that's it. Notice how we've really done a lot of math work for these problems so far. No, right? Like six, I'm looking at a list. F number five, I'm just looking at a degree and subtracting one. Number four, that's all observational. Look at a picture and make a decision, right? Number three, look at a picture and count how many things cross the x-axis, right? Now this one, I can say, yes, I did do some math, but was that hard math? No, right? I added or subtracted. That was it. One step, All right? For each one, one step. And this one, naming something, that's not, that's just looking at a list again, right? Looking at your notes, making sure you understand what they're called. So not a lot of math involved, okay? Uh, in a math quiz, not a lot of math involved. Like there is math. We're using situational and descriptions and stuff to help us with, but but we're not doing a lot of like hard calculations, which is kind of nice. This is why I tell you guys, if you know what you're doing, you can finish this quiz fast because most of it, you're just going to have to look and say, this is the answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. Okay. There are some where you're going to have to solve, but not many. Okay. Uh, let me see. So yeah, this, this is basically what your quiz is going to be based on. Okay.